Jeffrey Epstein, a sex offender now accused of sex trafficking underage girls. And he has some powerful connections. This is America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. Now for a topic I'm almost positive YouTube will demonetize and age restrict, ensuring hardly anyone sees it. Jeffrey Epstein. Who is Jeffrey Epstein? Well, he's been described as a financier, a money manager for billionaires, and a billionaire himself. However, no one seems to be quite sure if that billionaire thing is true. According to Forbes, Forbes has never included Epstein in its rankings of the world's billionaires, since there is scant proof he holds a 10-figure fortune. Yeah, he might just be one of those 100 millionaire posers. And according to Bloomberg, today, so little is known about Epstein's current business or clients that the only things that can be valued with any certainty are his properties. But there is one business he's been repeatedly accused of having. Sex trafficking of underage girls. According to the court documents, some as young as 14 years old at the time. Prosecutors last week accused him of luring dozens of girls to his luxury homes and paying them for sex. Horrible. If only there was some way we could have known that the guy who owns a plane people called the Lolita Express might be doing something inappropriate with underage girls. I guess the tip-off should have been that other time in 2008 when he was jailed for paying underage prostitutes, one of whom was 14 years old. But. He only served 13 months. Why wasn't he put away for a longer time? Well, back then, Labor Secretary Alexander Acosta was the U.S. attorney in charge of prosecuting Epstein. And he gave Epstein one of the most lenient sentences in U.S. history for a serial sex offender. Under the plea deal, he was afforded a work release program that allowed him to leave the jail for 12 hours a day, six days a week, and work unsupervised at his downtown West Palm Beach office. Acosta resigned last week amid public anger over that plea deal. There were also rumors Epstein was running an underage sex trafficking ring. Is sex trafficking where Epstein made his fortune? Who were his clientele? Was blackmailing them how he made his money? And will YouTube make this video age restricted? Unlike Epstein's sexual desires. This has been the stuff of internet conspiracies for years. I mean, besides several multi-million dollar estates and a fleet of planes, including the Lolita Express, the dude owns a 78-acre private island called Little St. James, where he built this totally not creepy looking temple. That temple is clearly not a church or a synagogue, but it does appear to have a gold statue of Greek god of the sea, Poseidon. And according to a contractor and engineer interviewed by Insider, the temple has a door that seems to be designed as if it were intended to lock people in. Wow. Worst tropical vacation ever. Unless you're Jeffrey Epstein. Let's not think about that too much. So the big question now is, how can we help Epstein's victims find justice and healing? <laughs> I'm kidding. The real question is, how can we use this scandal to attack the politicians we hate? If you're liberal, it's Donald Trump. If you're conservative, it's Bill Clinton. Turns out Epstein had some interesting connections to both Trump and Clinton. And both Trump and Clinton have been accused of sexual misconduct and rape in the past, though those allegations are unproven. So depending on which side of the aisle you sit, this is the chance to prove that the guy you hate is into some pretty disturbing stuff. Yes, this is what politics has become. Back in Donald Trump's younger days, he knew Jeffrey Epstein. Of course, just because you're pictured with someone doesn't mean you're friends. Case in point, what a photo. This 2002 New York Magazine piece on the mysterious Epstein calls him Gatsby-esque. It quotes Trump as saying, I've known Jeff for 15 years. Terrific guy. He's a lot of fun to be with. It's even said that he likes beautiful women as much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. No doubt about it, Jeffrey enjoys his social life. Wait. Epstein enjoys younger women as much as Trump loves regular beautiful women? Well, according to the court documents that came out later, that is accurate. But their connection goes deeper. Epstein had a house in Palm Beach, Florida, and he'd frequently visit Trump's Mar-a-Lago club. And Trump did once fly on one of Epstein's private jets, a small one, not the Lolita Express. Trump was hitching a ride back to New York. 
Apparently, that's a totally normal rich people thing. They hitch rides on each other's private jets. Eventually, Trump and Epstein had a falling out. Trump barred Epstein from Mar-a-Lago because Epstein sexually assaulted an underage girl at the club, according to court documents. And later, Trump gave assistance to Bradley Edwards, an attorney who represented some of Epstein's victims. The only thing that I can say about President Trump is that he is the only person who, in 2009, when I served a lot of subpoenas on a lot of people, or at least gave notice to some pretty uh, connected people that I was going, that I wanted to talk to them, he is the only person who picked up the phone and said, let's just talk, I'll give you as much time as you want, I'll tell you what you need to know. How about Bill Clinton's relationship with Jeffrey Epstein? According to the New York Times, Mr. Epstein is better known as a longtime friend of former President Bill Clinton's than as a close associate of Mr. Trump's. Jeffrey Epstein was involved in the Clinton Foundation. According to his attorneys, Epstein was part of the original group that conceived of the formation of the Clinton Global Initiative, which was part of the Clinton Foundation. And Clinton definitely took a lot of trips on Epstein's airplane, the Lolita Express one. We know this because the Federal Aviation Administration requires flight logs to be kept. And according to Fox News, Bill Clinton made at least 26 trips aboard the Lolita Express, even apparently ditching a Secret Service detail for at least five of the flights, according to records. Although to be fair, several of the flights were legs of the same trip. And all of this was before 2008, when Epstein went to jail as a sex offender. Bill Clinton's office made an official statement last week that he's not spoken to Epstein in well over a decade. So it seems both Trump and Clinton knew Epstein back in the day. Neither has spoken to Epstein in a long, long time. But that doesn't stop media from taking what little facts are available and hurling them at Trump slash Clinton depending on their political point of view, which is crazy. Not that media all seem to have a political point of view now, which is already crazy, but that that is where this conversation has gone. This is a time when we should all come together, hold hands across the aisle, and get mad at Jeffrey Epstein. He's the sex offender, guys. Epstein, by the way, defended himself to the New York Post by saying, I'm not a sexual predator, I'm an offender. It's the difference between a murderer and a person who steals a bagel. Yeah, the Post didn't buy it either. But Epstein has connections to many, many powerful people. In 2015, Gawker released Epstein's address book that contained more than 1,000 names. People from all walks of rich people life, like Alec Baldwin, Dustin Hoffman, Mick Jagger, street magician David Blaine, Ted Kennedy, David Koch, Rupert Murdoch, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, Steve Forbes, and the UK's Prince Andrew. It doesn't mean they're all guilty of something. It just means Epstein had contacts with lots of rich, connected people. But there's one name I want to draw attention to, because it ties back into questions about Epstein's wealth. Leslie Wexner, the billionaire founder of limited brands, now known as L Brands, and the parent company of Victoria's Secret. For at least a decade, Wexner was Epstein's only publicly known client. Now to be perfectly clear, Wexner has not been accused of any wrongdoing and Wexner reportedly severed ties with Epstein 10 years ago. But at one point, it was speculated that he was Epstein's primary source of wealth. According to this 2003 article in Vanity Fair, Wexner trusts Epstein so completely that he has assigned him the power of fiduciary over all his private trusts and foundations, which is super weird. In that 2002 article in New York Magazine, they interview a Wall Streeter who knows Epstein who said, it's a weird relationship. It's just not typical for someone of such enormous wealth to all of a sudden give his money to some guy most people have never heard of. Now, I mentioned earlier that there are rumors that Epstein was running an underage sex trafficking ring. There are also rumors he was blackmailing his clientele. In this 2015 court filing, one of Epstein's accusers says in a sworn testimony that Epstein trafficked her to many other powerful men, including politicians and powerful business executives. She also said that Epstein required me to describe the sexual events that I had with these men, presumably so that he could potentially blackmail them. And she names well-known business people as well as Prince Andrew of the British royal family, which he denies, by the way. But regardless of whether specific allegations can be proven, 
Jeffrey Epstein was definitely a guy that people knew about for a long time. Like with Bill Cosby and Harvey Weinstein, there were rumors and reports about Epstein for years. For example, Candace Bushnell, who wrote the Sex and the City column for the New York Observer, tried to look into those rumors about Epstein back in 1994. But she stopped reporting after she was thrown out of Epstein's townhouse and threatened. Back in 2002, Vicki Ward was working on a profile of Epstein for Vanity Fair magazine. She found that Epstein had allegedly assaulted two young sisters, one of whom had been underage at the time. The girls were willing to go on the record, but Ward says the editor of Vanity Fair cut that part of the story. This 2007 New York Magazine article was written after Epstein's indictment for sex crimes in Florida, but before his plea deal. In it, writer Michael Wolf said he has never been secretive about the girls. At one point, when his troubles began, he was talking to me and said, what can I say? I like young girls. Even after his prison time, Epstein was able to somewhat revive his reputation among the elite, throwing a party for Prince Andrew at his New York apartment, and attending a billionaire's dinner with Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. It wasn't until this three-part Miami Herald article last year that the FBI started moving on Epstein's case again. Why was Epstein able to get away with it for so long? High-priced attorneys and, again, connections to powerful and wealthy people. So the Epstein case is bigger than just Epstein himself. It shows how wealth and connections can protect a serial sex offender from consequences. The good news is, because of Epstein's case, allegations of sexual abuse by many other powerful people may start to come to the surface now. So, what do you think? Leave your comments below. And may I just remind you that YouTube likes to demonetize and often age-restrict our videos. That means fewer people see our episodes and we don't make enough money to continue the show. That's why we rely on your support. Contribute a dollar or more per episode to America Uncovered through the crowdfunding website Patreon. The Patreon link is at the end of this video and in the description below. And you can also help by sharing this episode with your friends. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.